Hi, I'm Tom Lynch and welcome to my studio where I'd like to share with you a, something special. A little bit of the dot bottle technique that I use when I paint. It's the most asked question in all of my workshops. How I use it, how I load it, where and it could be applied and so forth. So let's just take this short snippet and share with you just that particular aspect. I'll even show you a couple finished paintings on where it really came into play quite neat. So this all began years ago. I was in a neat angle workshop where I wanted to loosen up, capture more impressionism. And she handed me one of these old Windex tap pump spray bottles and said, after you do some brushwork with just clear water, add a few taps. It worked out great, served me well. I wish I remember the exact moment that I started putting paint in the spray bottle and making art using it that way. So that's what I want to share with you. They used to be on the market. They were referred to as, as a coarse mist defective sprayer. Well, they no longer make it because no one wanted a random series of size dots to come out when tapping. Everything should either be fine mist or coarse mist. So I had to have something custom made where you can lightly tap. So this has paint in it the same paint, the same color that I use in my, in my palette. And we'll talk to you about palettes and later and share with you all those particular techniques. So now you can get these spray bottles and they, I have a, probably a whole chapter in my book of 12 or 15 different items that you can use to make it. And I'll share with you some of those pages. So let's take it step by step. Look for a spray bottle now that has a yellow top and a purple neck. That will let you know that it works as a dot spray bottle, different size dots. And I'll take you overhead in a moment and show you what that looks like compared to some of the store bots. So you can't find these in stores, just a few locations where you can get the, the dot bottle pattern. Now, I use tube paint you know, for loading up. So you might use cakes or pan colors in your palette, but you're going to need tube color. And I can't recommend enough to get a tube paint that is very soft and very creamy. So I have re recently switched to the Sennelier brand paint. Very creamy, very milky. You'll notice it right away when you squeeze out in your palette, it melts into the palette. Versus before when I squeezed out paint, it stayed in the shape of like loading up your toothbrush. So that meant to me it was going to work very well. Also, the Sennelier paint does not have ox gall in it. Now that's a key component because ox gall is a hardening component. When the water hits it and it dries, so it could dry up some of the particles and then it could clog the sprayer. So non-ox gall and a nice creamy color like the Sennelier brand that I'm using. So let's share with you the loading of the colors. Now you might ask which colors and I have all of my colors with, with paint in a spray bottle because I might use it to enhance what I'm doing with the brush. I might use it to create something all by itself. So the general proportion, and again, that varies. If you're working on a darker painting, maybe you want to make it a little thicker, add a little more paint. If you're working on a light colored painting, then it doesn't have to be quite as much paint. So I recommend a, um, about to put the wrong color in there, in the wrong one. So I recommend a light color to start with and an inch and a half of paint. Now, this is such a creamy color that I have to do a half inch at a time. So there's a, a half inch squeezed out. There's another half inch. If I try to do it all at one time, an inch and a half, it would have landed into the paper below me. So I have an inch and a half of paint squeezed out from my tube watercolor. Then I want to raise that level one inch. Now you can, you know, dip it in a bucket. You can spray it in. So I know how much water is there. I'm going to increase the quantity by one inch. So one inch of paint, one and a half inch, excuse me, let me do that again. One inch of water, one and a half inch of paint. So I'm going to add more water to that. Now again, that soft color is going to help mix it right away and then I'll put the lid on and shake it up. So now I have my spray bottle loaded and ready to go. Now the motion, one tends to think the motion is to take and squeeze. It's not, it's a tapping motion held with the spray bottle almost horizontal. And I say almost because I don't want to go so far over that the straw is up in the air getting air. I want the straw to be inside and having only fluid colored water 
to become. So what the best thing I suggest is do some tapping into your spray bottle, excuse me, tapping into your bucket, and then come over to the paper, about two inches away from the paper. So I'll let you see uh, the distance that I am and the angle that I have. So it is going to be just a tapping motion like this, and I'll take you overhead to see the different sizes, but I wanted you to see from that angle how I have the bottle with a little bit of a curve, and it's a tapping motion. My finger's off, taps it, comes off, and taps it, and comes off. And so let me take you overhead where you can see that variety of sizes. And so that's an important little component, you know, for this, for there to be a variety of size dots. So I'll take you in close. You see that variety of size dots. Now, if you want to, you could use shields, whether it be a towel or here, this is called stencil paper. And I could hover that where I wanting to. Let's change colors a little bit. So I've got one of my uh, yellows here, my lemon yellow. So I'll add a couple tappings of that color. I'll add a little cobalt blue. So if you're not sure of your aim just yet, you could take and have there be, oh, I think I'll go to a green instead of the, I like that little shift there. So you could have that be a shield to kind of protect. Now look at how, I'm gonna give you a close up here to see, look at how much white is still showing. So I did a little practice over there. So see all of the different size dots that's the beauty, they're not all tiny. There's some clunkers, all different sizes. Now then the magic ingredient, sometimes I take and add clear water on top of that once again. And so I'll back you up a little bit. So this is going to open these up. So instead of being a circle, it's now going to be a jagged or irregular size. Let me set that over, make sure the paper's flat. And so that can now take and open this up and let them run together. If perchance you have a few places where that spray isn't where you wanted it to go, I'm gonna put a little angle so it lays flat, you can blot. So now I can come back and clean up, you know, some of the dots. So I'm working with a Fabriano extra white paper so it has a brighter look to it. So now that has opened those up and even there I was able to blot these and we'll make this into a tree just for fun. But I want to give you the, the general characteristics. So I'll take you back. You can see the palette make a, mix a couple of colors. Take a little bit of my burnt sienna, a little bit of my phthalo green and we'll just add a tree trunk or two to this. Should you like for smaller branches. I'll actually use a larger brush. So give you the general characteristics of that spray bottle. Let's call it Spray Bottle 101 and how it can create. So this is a natural hair brush, sable brush, your best of the hairs. So turning, sorry, my hand's in the way there, but it's gotta be a vertical. Lower that tree trunk just a touch more. Now a nice thing with the spray bottle, watch this. I'm gonna take the clear water and I'm gonna add some taps of clear water. You don't see them, trust me they're there, but watch what happens when I cast a shadow of this tree across the grassy ground. Look at how because of the clear water, it's going to create bumps and jagged irregular pattern. So this looks like a shadow of this tree across the bumpiness of the grass. Let me take you in close and show you how bumpy that particular part looks. So see where the dots of water have made a little more irregular instead of a clean, slick, smooth line. You've got that. So we can play with this further. I'm gonna show you more items that can be made with this. We come back in with the brush and add a little darker value, put in a little secret sauce, little accents of dark, two parts of the tree trunk if you want. So it's not just for leaves, but that's just a starting point on how it can do a lot more. And so a nice little bumpy set of shadows. So a pretty cool way of doing uh, trees. Once in a while, the stencil you can have and have that be an item. Let me slide into place and share with you several other items that can be done. So here, again, just like you've seen, and you have a bumpy edge to the texture of a tree trunk because clear water was there and here I sprayed out paint. So again, looking for that yellow and purple, a similar springtime bush or shrub. Here's kind of an exotic look. Look at all that's going on there. Now here I used a stencil 
again, and I laid the stencil and sprayed between. Then I gave it a shift over and sprayed a different color in between. So it started out that way at the top with the stencil. Then I moved the stencil over to spray in between the farmer's fields. And so here's what the spray bottle was able to do, just to create all those controlled landing areas for the paint to be either the grassy parts in between or the wildflowers. Also, look at how the spray bottle on top of a wash has given a lot of different size patterns and bumps. So I'll take you through some more different ones. The exact same technique, exact same distance. Here are a couple of different uh, blues for the foamy surf, all that turbulent feeling of action. We talked about branches and leaves, how that spray bottle can do that. So this is a charts book. Now let me share with you this, how it could also do the desert. So instead of using your brush to capture the suggestion of the desert floor, that's again where the spray bottle could work. And I'll demonstrate some more of these for you again. Here's where the spray bottle was able to soften some edges. So I painted the blue sky and before it dried, I came in with just clear water. So that was the clear water. So I have that old Windex one. Again, your spray bottle can put just clear water into it and it will do the same thing as the Windex one that that teacher showed me how to do. So it softens some edges. Now let me share with you a couple of tricks where you have to be a little bit further away. So here we go. Now I'm gonna have you see from the distance a little bit more where I'm gonna stand further back and capture a spray that way. So I'll put a shield down here. Let me take a tube of paint, just set it down here. So I'll take one of the greens, got it? I'll prime the pump. Now for a very small size dot, I'm gonna stand further back and squeeze as hard as I can. So now you leave your finger on the spray bottle and spray again and again and again. <laughs> Take a it's, it's like cheating, it's just way too easy. I'm gonna put a lighter color at the top. So I have a lighter color towards the top there, pressing very hard. And so take a look here, so there's, see how fine mist because I squeeze very hard and I have more of a fine mist spray. So now look how it looks like grass going across the field there. A much more interesting view for grass, a fun little suggestion for grass instead of having your brush paint like that. Now I might suggest a couple more coatings. Uh, so let that dry, come back with another coating and then do it again and again a few more times. And so let's uh, share with you where that had you applied two or three coatings. That's where this grass would now start to fill in a little bit more. Here's another example with a spray bottle. I took my yellow spray, and after all was said and done, I added some extra spray on top to give a little more texture to the forest. So after this is even dry, come back on top with a lighter color to add some more texture. In addition to the grass, you can do sparkle on water. Again, yellow top, purple neck, stand back and just a light blue and spray. You can capture, I don't know what that is there. I think that's got to be a whale breaching uh, turtle in the water. These charts are uh, 50 years old, some of them. So there's where I can take and uh, spray with a distance and I put a piece of uh, tape and another piece of paper to protect that area. One of my favorites to see this, and that is a country road. So I put a masking tape left and right and sprayed a yellow ochre back in here, a burnt sienna across here, and a cobalt and a magenta mixture for the foreground. A great look for the country road. Look at those little delicate little patterns, you know, for dirt. So now let me share with you some finished paintings where this spray bottle idea comes into play. And so here's a finished work of art. Let me set that to the side, turn this board over. And so all of those beautiful little wild flowers, that was spray bottle technique. Some of the leaves were done with sponge as well as spray bottle. A nice little trick, remember I mentioned to you as well, come back afterwards and add a little accent. It just breaks up the harshness of some of the darks. A uh, spray bottle for down in here, you can see where I uh, also did some, did some of the spray bottle technique, both the light color over dark. Just did this demo recently and all of the crashing waves and water was also a technique for the spray bottle. We can come back and add a couple more leaves here. Let me prime the pump, hold it horizontal, a light little tapping. So it's as simple as that to do that light little tapping and you can have that feeling of 
the spray bottle. So there is what I wanted to show to you, uh, was a chance to see the spray bottle in action. You can do a lot more things. We can do a lot of finishing touches. I mean, still accents of color on some of the paintings that I might have come back and added to it later on. But I want to just get, get you started. Visit my website, watch some of my demos, go to Art Academy Live. You'll see the spray bottle in action in robust use. But I wanted to kind of tease you with how it can do a lot of fun things by just loading up some of your tube colors in your spray bottle. But find one that you can lightly tap, and then just those few dots will come out. And there's a lot of possibilities after that. So see me more, see me in a workshop, or visit my online classes, or Art Academy Live has 300 different lessons. So I wanted to share with you what I find is a lot of fun in the process of making art or making a painting. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. I'll see you in a workshop soon. Get your spray bottles at artacademylive.com and come on over to a workshop. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.